Hi, this is Mark from LongIronWatch.com, and today we're going to get into a little badge on some Damasco watches, and it's just a little badge that says SI, and what that badge means. Uh, it means a big difference in price, uh, and but it also means there's a lot going on on the inside. So in my opinion, the SI badge is for the true, true connoisseur uh, or someone that can appreciate excellent excellent mechanical watchmaking without a large show on the outside you know sort of analogous i guess to like an amg badge or something although amgs generally have better wheels ground effects etc this really is just two letters on a watch and it just means a whole heck of a lot more so i have a silicon escapement damasco here and we will go over it my own wrist check still doing the red star tumbler uh, I released these, what, two weeks ago or so? I think it sold out in like 40 hours. I had four different colors. They are all coming back. And uh, this one that seems to be garnering a lot of attention lately, kind of like a, uh, a custom one that I just actually more or less just threw together. Uh, more on that some other time. Anyway, let's, um, let's check out these Damasco watches. So the watch we're going to get into today is the Damasco DC57 SI. So the SI is the differential here, and it commands a much higher price tag. Uh, so a standard DC57 without the SI goes for around eighteen hundred bucks. Add the SI in, uh, twenty four hundred. Uh, all those prices, by the way, on leather, not on the bracelet. As you guys know, the bracelet adds like seven or eight hundred bucks into the price so a pricey watch uh, I purchased this watch from a friend with the intent to only do the video uh, he's actually upgrading to a DK 11 which is another Damasco with a signature in-house movement uh, so actually I will be selling this watch and if you're interested you know contact me and you know we'll, we'll, we'll work something out but it is a used watch um, but <laughs> barely used as you can clearly see okay so we're in the damasco dc 57 si so like i said that si on the dial right there means all the difference it means it has basically a silicon escapement and a couple other additions that make the watch super duper we'll see right now the watch is not running the second hand is stopped chrono is at zero uh, zero elapsed minutes, zero elapsed hours. So let's um let's get it running, and we'll see the seconds hand start up, and we will start the chrono just so you can see how it operates. So it still runs. So the stock DC fifty seven runs on a Valjoux seventy seven fifty movement, which is you know it is basic uh, chronograph movement, probably the preeminent Swiss chronograph movement out there, automatic Swiss chronograph movement. Um, the watch itself in really quickly is 40 millimeters in diameter, 14 thick to a nice uh, AR sapphire crystal, 48 tip to tip, 100 meters of water resistance, uh, blah, blah, blah. The entire dial is done in super luminova, uh, so when, and the numbers and hands are in black, so when you flip out the lights, it does give an amazing effect. But let's talk now. So what does this SI mean? Well, it means that the watch, again, is fitted with... Uh, what they call an EPS spiral, uh, it is basically a silicon hairspring. Why do you want a silicon hairspring? Well, the hairspring, and we'll open the watch in a minute. I'll take the gloves off and I'll put on finger cots and stuff. Uh, the, the heartbeat of the watch is a little spring in here. No, this is not the Damasco movement. This is, I don't know, something out of uh, something else, some other low-cost mass-produced movement. Uh, there's a little spring here. I don't know if you can really see it, but it's a coiled-up spring, and it's what... Uh, it's what has the uh, balance wheel rotating back and forth. It's basically a spring. Um, I actually don't know if this one runs. Let's wind her up and see if anything... There it goes. Look at that. There she goes. So that spring, that coiled up hair spring, is, you know, going uh, back and forth. Uh, it's compressing and, and expanding in a spiral fashion, and it's spinning the balance uh, back and forth. And we know, we, we know all this stuff from all the other watch and learns. Uh, basically releasing the seconds hand tied to the hours and the minutes on this watch is missing a few hands uh, but again this is just for demonstration purposes so what happens when Damasco does this on their watch they are replacing the balance and the spring the hairspring itself 
because it's metallic, it is anti-magnetic, first of all, very important to know this, that the hairspring is anti-magnetic, always anyway. Uh, to it may not usually like an invar or something uh, a high nickel a high nickel alloy that resists magnetic fields, uh, but replacing it with silicon, which is obviously non-metallic, the you know, same stuff that basically computer chips are made out of a polycrystalline silicon. Uh, it's totally non-magnetic at that point, and as well besides besides being non-magnetic, temperature doesn't make it change its shape within our realm of uh, <laughs> of measurement. So these, the material, I guess it doesn't hack. I'm going to show you the spring. The material that the spring is made of, obviously, is it's metallic. So I'll put that down for now. We'll look at the watch for a second. It's metallic uh, in a normal watch, but then we had a silicon escapement. Uh, it turns into glass. And so metal will increase in, de when metal increases and decreases in temperature, uh, it, it grows, it shrinks. When, when you do it to glass, it barely grows and barely shrinks in relation to its size. So it's much more stable, much more easier to temperature compensate the movement. Uh, it makes it more impact resistant. Um, it also is lighter than a metallic spring. What does lighter do? Well, you know, when you're in physics class and stuff, you talk about massless springs and springless masses. By lightening the spring even more, it comes out of the equation of, uh, I guess, the periodicity of the balance wheel, and it makes it much easier and a much more stable system. Uh, easier to figure out uh, what adjustments you have to make to get it to beat on time. What else we got going on inside? Increase to a 52-hour power reserve, so to strengthened mainspring um, barrel, and increases it to a 52-hour power reserve. Ceramic ball bearings in the rotor. Uh, Obviously, fully coated in that, you know, crazy hardening process that Damasco does, some kind of nitrogen drenching or something, that makes it scratch resistant. You get that with any of them, though. Uh, the balance wheel is beryllium copper, and they have little uh, non-ferrous magnetic, non-ferrous anti-magnetic weight attached to them to, to tune it out a bit. Again, let me take off the back and show you in a second. Uh, and the last thing is that on a conventional watch like the one I just showed you, or even on the non-SI version, the balance spring is fastened at both ends. It's used, uh, they use pressure, they use deformation, heat, a bunch of things to get it to fuse together. When you're dealing with silicon, obviously um, it doesn't really deform much, so they actually use springs to clip it at both ends, and the springs just make it a much more uh, harmonic, if you will, much more, it's, besides being a more elegant solution, it's better for the stability of the system. If the system gets a jolt or a knock, it's more likely uh, it, it'll react much better and, uh, I guess, damp out that disturbance much faster to make the watch even more accurate. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to just remove half the bracelet, uh, pop on some finger cots because I don't want to use my gloves on this one, and uh, we will look at the movement. Okay, so I popped the back off, and immediately I'm faced with what well, looks like another cover. Here's the case back. Took it off. Uh, what is this? Well, the watches are anti-magnetic. And how do you do that? Well, you make, um, in physics, we in electromagnetics, we would have called it, a, a, I guess, a Gaussian surface. So there's a cover over the movement. And that prevents magnetic fields from infiltrating the movement. Yes, the hairspring is glass, so it is n not subject to magnetization. But you still have a lot of brass gears and parts and stuff that can be magnetized. So this cover helps to uh, eliminate that possibility. Another thing we see, I think this is the first time I've ever opened a Damasco, actually. Um, we can check out that it's not a standard black O-ring. It's, uh, it's a special uh, kind of a rubber compound, but it's much more uh, inert to uh, various solvents and stuff and just creates a better seal. So here we're looking at Damasco's movement. Excuse me, it's a Valjoux 7750, but uh, we have Damascus modifications, and you can see there's a level of um, finishing to it. Everything just looks really great. So what I'd like to do is I'm going to stop the movement so we can check out the balance wheel. And uh, you can see it's a, uh, a Valjoux 7750. It's a unidirectional winder, so this direction does nothing. So it's just spinning on the bearings. That's why it does that. This way winds. You hear it? This way does nothing. 
So Damasco has a great image of this on their website, um, the movement, and you can kind of blow up a little bit, but I'm not gonna get too close obviously, but there you can see that is a glass balance spring or hair spring, uh, silicon, non-metallic, okay? So that's the piece that we're talking about. And if we look at the balance itself, um, I'm gonna turn it a little bit this way. So this, the metal is beryllium copper, which is an alloy. And on the outside here, you see this little kind of half moon weight that I'm staring at here? I, you'll notice that I'm pretty sure the watch lacks, it sure does, it lacks a regulator pin, right? Yeah, there's no way to speed it up and slow it down. And that is done. I guess they call it, I guess it would be a free sprung balance. Um, Watchmakers, if I'm right, let me know. I think it's a free sprung balance. Uh, so these weights, this little eccentric weight, will be turned in and out to get the moment of inertia, uh, the rotational moment of inertia of the wheel to change, to change uh, how fast it vib uh, rotates back and forth. So there's one weight here, there's another weight here, and they are around, the, there's another weight there. They are around the periphery of the balance wheel to change uh, its rate of rotation. You know, again, speed up the watch, slow it down. So obviously we're dealing with true watchmaker stuff. A novice, not you know, again, I, I do consider myself a novice, but I would never attempt to uh, regulate one of these. This is insane. This is way above my pay grade, so to speak. I mean, I can open it and show it and I can figure out how it works, but I'm definitely not gonna screw with it. Uh, but that's it, that's the, um, that is the major modification that Damasco does. And you can see, actually, the entire balance cock bridge that it's attached to is all, it's a different metal finishing there and the rest of the movement, which leads me to believe that this entire part is substituted out for the stock part on the 7750. Um, everything else seems to be pretty standard. Like I said, the mainspring barrel uh, has been strengthened to give the watch uh, 52 hours of power reserve. Uh, I'm just going to put that back on there for safekeeping. Uh, we'll close it up and we'll finish it up. So there we go. I feel better once, once it's closed up. Put, I'll put the uh, the gloves back on that people abhor so much when I open watches and touch it. But I know if it's a functioning watch, I would never use these gloves. You guys want to just reiterate again that I am going to be selling this watch. Like I said, it is a used watch, um, but barely used. It's got not a scratch on it. Um, I'm not sure how much this guy actually used it. I think he's really just flipping it uh, for a uh, newer Damasco. And this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you the Damasco silicon technology. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below, and I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.